we're going to look at adding and subtracting fractions. So we're going to go through the process, and the reason we put them both adding and subtracting together, it's, it's pretty simple. Okay. In the very first question, we're trying to solve 3 over 5 plus 3 over 4. Um, with fractions, anytime we're adding or subtracting them, our denominators here, which is the bottom part of our fraction, those values must be the same. So very quickly we notice they're not. So what we're going to do is going to make equivalent fractions to them. So we have to go through that process. So, uh, what we do, and what you've already done some work on, is we're going to take these two values, 5 and 4, and we're going to list the multiples of them. Okay. In fact, I'll move this other question out of the way. I'll list the multiples over there, and we'll get back to that one after. So we have 5 and 4. So I'm just going to make a list of multiples. So 5 times 1 is 5, times 2 is 10, 15. And what's nice about listing multiples, I can just continuously add. right? As long as I just keep adding by 5s, I can keep going here. I can do the same thing with 4s. Four. So 4 times 1, times 2, 3. Whoops. Uh, almost forgot that one. There we go. 20, 24, 28. And it keeps going. Um, using the lowest common multiple, they usually sometimes will call it the LCM, can be really helpful. Uh, but really any multiple will actually work. It just gives us less work if we use the lowest common one. So I take a look and I quickly discover that, hey, 20 works. 20 is a common multiple between both of the denominators, right? These were the two denominators, 5 and 4. And we can link them back to this piece. We took 5, we took 4, we listed their multiples, and now we're going to change them into this. What's important is figuring out what we multiplied by to get here. So in this case, we did 5 times 4. That works out. And we did 4 times 5. Okay, almost like uh, opposites of each other. So what we're going to do is this whole fraction here, because it was 5 and we're changing it into 20, we are multiplying all parts of that fraction by 4. We're going to do the same thing here. And as we change this one to us have the same denominator, we're going to multiply every part of that fraction by 5. So that means we did 5 times 4, that gave us 20. We also have to do 3 times 4, which will actually give us 12. So we focus on the denominator, get the number, and then we just bring along the numerator after. The dog was barking. After, okay. Um, we do the same thing here. We have 4 times 5, give us our 20. So we've got to do the same to the numerator. 3 times 5, which gives us 15. I'm going to carry down the same operation we had before, which is our addition. Oops, that is a funny looking plus sign. There we go. So now we have it. We have our addition of fractions. Um, in fact, our answer is going to be over the same number. When we add or subtract fractions, the denominator stays the exact same. Oh. So it's going to be 20 in the end. The only stuff we actually work with is our numerator. So it's 12 plus 15. And if we do a little work, we'll figure out that 12 plus 15 is actually 27. Now I can, that's it. That's an improper fraction. That works out great. We can leave it as an improper fraction. I might write it as a mixed fraction also. If I do a little bit of work where I remember I divide, and it ends up as I have 1 and 7 twentieths. That could also be it. Um, both of those things are equivalent. Either one is a correct answer. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come back over. Those common multiples are going to be really handy for the second part of this question. Okay. I'm going to bring the second part up. We're going to work on the subtraction of fractions. <clears throat> We're using the exact same numbers, which is nice, which means our lowest common multiples will be the same. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to prove that we could use any multiple. So I'm going to take this a little farther. I know that I can get the 35 and 40. I'm going to go 32, 36, and look at that. 40 is another multiple. It's not the lowest common multiple, but I just want to prove to you that it is a value we could use. Mm -hmm. So in this case, we're going to use 40. We're going to change 5 and 4 both into 40. I still have to know what I multiply by. So 5 times something equals 40. I do a little thinking of my multiplication tables, and I remember that 5 times 8 gives me 40. 4 times something's got to be 40. Same idea. Oh, it's going to be the number 10. Mm. So we're going to rewrite this fraction. Okay. We know that the number on the bottom is going to be 40. That's what we've chosen. And we know to get to that 40, we did 4 times 10. And then we did 5 times 8. So I have to do the same things with the numerators. 3 times 8, maybe I punch in my calculator and I figure out, da da da, a little work, and I end up at 24. Yeah. And I do 3 times 10, same thing, 
to do a little work. 30 on the floor. Now I'm going to bring down that operator there, which is subtraction. I'm going to rewrite this so it's a little clearer because i got a lot of lines and stuff, so I want to make sure it's clear what I'm working with. So when I rewrite this, I have 24 over 40 minus 30 over 40. Just like, just like our addition, our answer will have the same denominator. So because it's 40, in the question we lined it up, our denominator doesn't change. The only part we change is our numerator. So 24 minus 30. Well, actually, this is going to be negative. I do this, I end up at negative 6 in this case. The <laughs> last piece I'm going to do, the last piece I'm going to do, is I'm going to reduce this fraction, okay? Um, the other one, I knew very quickly by looking at it, 7 is a prime number, so there's nothing I could divide into it. So I knew I couldn't reduce this one. Mm -hmm. This one here, though, these are both even. Both even means we can at least divide by 2. So just like we did way up at this part, we multiply both the top and the bottom by the same number. We're going to divide both of the top and the bottom, so numerator and denominator, by the same value. Negative 6 divide 2 gives me negative 3. And 40 divide 2 gives me 20. And look at that. We're back at our denominator of 20. That was one of the ones we could have used. So even if we used a value that wasn't the lowest common multiple, um, as long as we do this process here, reducing in the end, we can still get our lowest terms for our fraction. Okay? So anytime we add and subtract fractions, we just got to keep in mind, we need a common denominator between them. And the answer will always have that denominator. Just like here, we went 40. Answer had 40. And then in the end, we discovered we could reduce it a little to 20. Okay?